Hello and welcome to Winging It. And once more we are back with another game from the Wingspan World Cup 2023. Uh, this is a post-commentated game so uh, I do know what's going to happen uh, but hopefully I can give a little bit of insight uh, into the decision making and try and yeah explain what was going through my mind at each decision point and we start off of course uh, here with the starting hand and it's all looking very pink which is uh, definitely an interesting start to have with two, uh, three food cost pink egg laying powers and then another three food cost pink power in the gold oreo. So not really ideal I think in these kind of starting hands. You want cheat birds, you want brown powers. Uh, Falconer with the bonus card is quite nice and is making me look at this common maganza. Uh, something to get down, potentially hit a couple of those end around goals as well with all that egg space. So um, yeah, going second in this game is definitely a little bit more tricky. Um, with that tray, we have got painted white, white stars, so I think that would be one uh, I'd be looking to pick up if I'm going first, and certainly I'm anticipating my opponent uh, is going to go for that. But yeah, I think my plan here is, uh, is just go for this Maganza, get some eggs down, uh, maybe do a little bit of digging, and maybe look at that California quail. Not often something I look at early in the game, but um, yeah, I am going to at least try and keep some of the food for that when playing this Baganza and yeah no surprises my opponent did uh, pick up the white stuff so that's gone but yeah we do have worm and seed and there is another seed in the feeder so uh, if we really need to uh, we can go for this quail maybe look at getting that down but um, like I said initial thing is definitely get this Baganza down we can lay eggs and then of course uh, when we're drawing cards we can discard an egg uh, go and get ourselves an extra card so uh, we're going to go and get our eggs down our opponent I think is going to follow suit uh, see they played the rebuild goal there so definitely a better wetland bird than what I've got uh, much stronger brown power but um, yeah it's going to perform a similar function here in just being able to lay eggs on it discard and be able to get some extra cards so um, yeah it's time for us to draw we are going to go top deck first and a very lovely pick up there in the cold tip and this is the point where the cogs are turning, the ideas are starting to form in my head, and I'm thinking, okay, yeah, with this quail, we can get a pretty nice forest going on here. Um, Colt, it was just such a lovely pickup. Managed to be fortunate enough uh, to keep the exact food there for that. And of course, the uh, bird power, the brown power on that bird. When you gain food, you get a cache of a seed from the supply, but you can then spend that on playing birds and with this quail in hand where it needs two seeds, that's just going to help so much with the early game tempo. Really going to help, um, yeah, get things set up quickly. Um, and I think especially with this end around goal, birds in one row, quite difficult to get three. So I think ordinarily if you get two, you should be tying at least with your opponent and maybe giving yourself a shot at winning and getting those four points. So um, yeah, this, uh, this felt very nice. I mean, I've had many games like this where you play a, a weak wetland bird, like this Maganza, you lay eggs, and then you find that you're drawing cards maybe three, four, even five times and just not finding anything good. So uh, definitely good fortune there to find something like the Cultist straight away. And yeah, we're just going to benefit from that. So um, go and get some food. We're going to get one seed and then a cash as well on the Cultip. Um, planned that way because two worms left there. Uh, I know my opponent, they've got this white start. I'm anticipating uh, that they're going to play that before um, going and taking food. And indeed, that is what they do here. That leaves me uh, to go and grab the worm I need. And there we go. We've got uh, what we need for this quail. Uh, we're only, only going to have to spend one of these cultic caches. And I think that's important because I really can't see myself struggling for food much in this game. Uh, if we're going forest engine, we're probably going to have so much food uh, that we almost don't know what to do with it. Um, so to be able to keep the cache on the cultic, which is, of course, worth a point, is definitely nice. And yeah, because we only had to dig once, we still had that extra egg on the Maganza. So nice. Again, for this, this reason of tempo, just to be able to get that quail down. And uh, we can go and take food. Uh, but we are definitely going to look at our opponent's board with a little bit of nervousness because Maltoni's Warbler has appeared. Uh, and if you know me at all, you know how much I love these teal powers. Um, I just really understand and appreciate how strong they can be. So whenever I see uh, an opponent going for one in this scenario, yeah, it, uh, it definitely makes me feel a little bit nervous, but um, I'm just going to do my own thing. I think I've got a pretty solid foundation here in the forest. Uh, the wetlands is not so great, so that's kind of my next priority, I think, here. As we go here into round two, 
And yeah, not the strong wetland birds in the tray, but two birds I really like the look of. Bellsbury and Golden Eagle. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and grab them both. So Golden Eagle, really lovely big point bird here. Um, hits the falcon a bonus card for two more points. I've already got one rodent and there's two more sat in the feeder um, that I can hopefully go and grab. So yeah, that will be a good one to get. And then maybe I put that in the wetlands, maybe just build that out another spot, get myself um, access to some more cards. Um, or it can go in the grass and so then maybe, you know, help me for that third end of round goal. Uh, I probably am going to want to lay eggs at some point, uh, both with this end of round goal and, of course, that final one. Uh, eggs in the cavity desk. We've got loads of those spaces, but uh, no real way of actually laying eggs on those because, unfortunately, California quail, it can only lay eggs on itself. So um, we're going to have to think a little bit about that um, as this game goes on. But, um, yeah, I'm definitely... Happy, as I said, uh, with this opening and just taking a look at my opponent as well. They have got Spotted Sandpiper, which I do not mind one bit if they're going to go ahead and draw cards and use that because, yeah, free cards for me. It's uh, it's kind of the missing piece of my puzzle and talk of missing pieces of the puzzle. American Robin goes and pops up in the tray. So lovely stuff. We're going to go ahead and grab that. And uh, yeah, just a really nice addition to this forest engine. Um, again, if these free cards are just going to keep coming in, which it looks like they are as my opponent draws cards yet again, um, we're just going to be able to cycle with this Robin. And we might not have to draw cards that many more times in the rest of this game if we could just keep the free cards coming. We'll just keep taking food. We've already got a few big point birds, that Galenule as well, um, that we managed to get looking really, really tasty. And yet another free bird comes through, and it's another great one in the Great Horned House. So, yeah, definitely getting some good fortune, I think. Uh, from this spotted sandpiper but hey that's the risk you take uh, when you're in a position like my opponent here they've got much better wetlands than me they're getting more cards they're getting points when they're doing it I have no wetlands here so I think it's quite risky uh, to be using um, the co-op power so liberally like this and I think it is um, definitely showing kind of what the worst case scenario can be here um, when yeah you're just giving all of these amazing cards to me and uh, I'm not having to do that digging and I can just yeah focus on getting food and with all these big point birds high food cost you know the food as I said at the at the start of this game probably not going to be a problem here uh, with this forest so um, yeah we do think a little bit there we're just trying to you know negotiate this end around a little bit try and think about our egg space think about what sequence we want to be playing these birds in um, but Robin for me has to go down there so um, yeah got four birds here I want to play and then the Sparrowhawk um, ordinarily could be a nice play here with uh, with the Falkner, of course, a couple more points, but yeah, in this forest engine, um, I'd much rather be getting these brown powers down and um, yeah, if I need something to cycle with, so um, that for me is uh, is definitely going to be the one uh, that we used to tuck and draw through this Robin. So my opponent finally stops digging, they go for food, they take my rodents, but it's okay, I can grab a couple of worms uh, in order to go ahead and play this spell through, and I think uh, that is how I'm going to be uh, trying to get something in the grasslands, of course, for the next end around. Uh, maybe think about just something that's going to help get some extra eggs because uh, this end of round goal as well is, is a little bit of a tricky one to negotiate. We've got four egg spaces there in the wetlands and two turns in this round. So um, I'm really thinking at this point, do I just go ahead? Legs twice, looking at my opponent. They've not got any down at the moment, but I know they have got the space for that. Uh, but with Moltoni's Warble, it's always tricky because you're not always getting loads of eggs. You'll see there, they have gone for eggs. You only get two at a time. Um, so you do need something else in the grasslands. Uh, luckily for me, I was paying attention and I did notice there was Brewer's Blackbird in the tray earlier this round. And I'm pretty sure my opponent picked that up. And they have the food for that. And of course, all these extra cards kind of screams that you're going to do a bit of tucking and uh, a bit of egg legs. So yeah, just trying to count here, just trying to work out, okay... My opponent most likely here is going to be able to get to four eggs. Um, so I'm trying to think through the plan. Is it worth laying eggs twice here and tying? Get four eggs, get three extra points from the end of round. Or should I just play the Bells Vario and, uh, and then lay eggs? Accept the fact that I'm going to lose the end of round. But um, those eggs are going to qualify me. Get a couple of points at the very least. And um, just help the tempo as well. Because again, you know, I've got this California Quell as my only egg source. If I'm going to be playing all these big point birds, I'm going to need more eggs than that. Um, so yeah, definitely going to need to think a little bit about um, at least getting some extra eggs now 
but then also we've got that uh, that fourth end of round goal to contend with as well, and we're probably going to want to lay eggs for that. So um, yeah, just like I say, thinking here, counting it through, going through the scenarios, if I lay eggs twice, how many points is that worth? What's the end of our goal situation? Not just for this round, but also next round um, in order for those birds to be getting down in the grass. And of course, that's going to cost me some turns. So um, I want to try and make sure I'm doing this um, as efficiently as possible. So um, yeah, Bell's Virio, as I say, definitely um, tempting here just to be able to get that down. I mean, it's quite useful, I think, sometimes to be able to see that bonus card early. Gives you a bit more information about the cards that I'm looking for. Um, so yeah, we are indeed in the end going to go ahead and play this Bell's Rio um, down in the grasslands. And um, yeah, we're going to hope hope that we get a good bonus card uh, from this, like I say. See what we get from the Robin later. Maybe some more free cards are going to come our way that we're going to have to decide from. And yeah, it is a pretty good bonus card there. Uh, Omnivore Expert for two points already, but we have the Galanul as well. That I was already looking at playing, in all honesty. Already big points. Um, and potentially if I'm thinking, okay, if I might want to draw cards once more this game, getting something like the Galanil down before that to be able to get the extra card, um, definitely nice. So there indeed is the Bruce Blackbird. Glad I was paying attention. Knew that that was incoming. So yeah, my opponent there can lay eggs. They can fill up the Grasslands, but then get an egg on the Blackbird, which they can use to play um, the extra bird at the round end with the Maltoni because they've already done all the actions. Um, so that extra egg laying as well going to help there. Uh, but like I said, we're going to lay eggs, we're going to chuck the seed. Um, don't think food's going to be a problem here. I'm quite happy to get rid of that. Um, if I change my mind and need one back later, there's always some caches on the coal tit, so um, always worth uh, discarding the seed there, I think. And uh, yeah, just getting a few extra eggs down definitely helps uh, in order to get the rest of this engine set up, because I think it's pretty much there. And I think when you get to the end of round two and your engine is pretty much there, uh, I think you could be quite happy with uh, the situation you found yourself in. So yeah, got this Great Horned Owl. That's going to be probably the final uh, forest engine bird to go down. And then it's just going to be about running that. It's going to be about taking that food. Um, getting the card cycle with the Robin is going to be key. Um, again, you know, probably got this Oyster Catcher, which I might want to play. Um, but that is definitely the one. If I'm going to tuck any, uh, it's going to be that one. But equally, my opponent, running Moltoni, they have to draw cards every round. And I think with this Blackbird, I think with the, the real lack of food access, they're going to want to discard in the forest as well. I think they'll keep using that and keep giving me the freebies. Um, so that is definitely going to help. But um, yeah, beginning of round three, uh, Hummingbird has appeared. That was the Moltoni play. And um, yeah, that definitely makes things interesting because, again, we're probably not short of food. So um, definitely a good play for them. Um, and they are struggling for food. So... I did have a chat with my opponent after the game about their thoughts on playing the Hummingbird in the forest instead there, because I have done that and I have seen that a few times with Maltoni because, you know, that way you're getting all food when you take food in the forest. And uh, if you can minimize the number of turns you're taking food with Maltoni and really maximize the number of turns uh, that you're laying eggs, especially when you've got strong action uh, with something like a Brewer's Blackbird in there, it just gives you more options. But um, yeah, I think Hummingbird in the Grasslands works here as well, just to be able to get that little bit of extra food uh, when you do lay your eggs. So another free card as another Falconer Bird. So Burrowing Owl, uh, very nice to see. Don't mind that at all. Um, especially with the center round goal, we're going to want to play something in the Grasslands at least and maybe try and push to two uh, or three more birds to try and get something from the center round. But um, yeah, it just gives us some options. Um, um, we are, of course, going to keep tucking on this Robin. Someone like the Whippecker ordinarily wouldn't mind that. Um, but yeah, when we've got uh, the Great Horned Owl, which um, I think we're going to force that next turn. Uh, we couldn't get the rodent we wanted, but again, I'm just going to keep saying it. Food's not going to be a problem here. If I have to overpay a little bit um, to, to get that down a turn sooner, uh, get myself the start as an extra food, so it's sort of paying for itself. But um, the chance of some extra points through that brown power, um, that's, the, that's the key for me here, because... Um, yeah, at the moment, obviously three points in that forest. We get uh, a tuck, an egg, and a cash. If we can get four points, thanks to this Great Horned Owl, uh, that's a sign of a really solid engine, I think. Four points with the food generation and the uh, the card cycle with this Robin. Uh, really, really good. And uh, yeah, just for the rest of this game, really, once we play that, we're going to have nine turns left. Just going to all be about getting the food, uh, trying to get some more 
predator powers, uh, some more omnivore birds. Uh, there are quite a few that hit both, so uh, definitely be hoping one of those maybe comes up, uh, either through the sandpiper uh, or maybe just through my robin. But um, yeah, it's looking pretty straightforward uh, for the rest of this game. It's probably just going to be playing birds, which will start with this horned owl, as I said, and taking food and maybe laying eggs a bit at the end. I am starting to think at this point, I don't need to draw cards again. Uh, already got three cards in my hand I want to play. So that's three of my remaining turns. Probably to get the food to play those, I'd need to take food maybe three or four times. Um, and that only leaves a couple of turns late in the game, which I probably want to be laying eggs. Because uh, again, we need some eggs in the cavity nest. Got a few with the Maganza, but uh, we're probably going to need more than that to make sure we win. And I think that is going to be a, a key one to win. Uh, of course, if you uh, lose an end of round goal, instead of winning it, it's a six point swing to your opponent, which can be game changing. So I want to make sure uh, I'm on the correct side of that six point swing. And yeah, keeping the keeping the points very firmly on, the, on my side of the table. But um, yeah, as I say, at the moment, all uh, pretty straightforward for me. Um, but things are looking good for my opponent as well. They're really building out this Grasslands, which is good for them. Get another bonus card there through the little bustard. So um, yeah, no, they're not short of cards. They're not short of eggs. It's really food um, that they are kind of struggling for. So I'm definitely anticipating um, some spamming of food from uh, their hummingbird. But um, that's not going to change my plan. We're going to take food and we get the perfect four-point turn there. Um, the horned owl doing its job. Uh, pretty likely to get a success there, but not guaranteed. So um, you can never be too sure. And yeah, Red Bailey Woodpecker again, more tucking fodder. I think at this point, quite happy to draw tucking fodder. Um, but you know, as we get into that final round, that's where I'm really hoping I can pick up something else. Um, and definitely expecting my opponent, um, they're going to need to draw cards at some point in that final round. Uh, normally, you do it sooner rather than later just to give you more information, see what cards you've drawn. That tells you what food you need to get. That allows you to make a plan with the Moltoni's Warburon. Yeah, the, the key to using these teal powers is to be able to plan effectively and to really make the use of your turns and make the use of the resources you're given. So um, there we go, a little bit of uh, food cop there, but we need rodents. We, we didn't get any on the on the turn we went for food, so a little bit unlucky, but um, yeah, we're always going to be able to overpay for stuff. I don't think that's going to be a problem. We do get some more rodents, so we're happy. We get another tuck of my horned owl, so we're even happier. Yeah, another lovely, lovely four-point turn. Uh, this uh, this California quail has been so nice. Um, again, not really a bird I usually look at. Uh, not usually a bird that gets picked up from a starting tray. Uh, but it, it got picked up here, it got played. Uh, and I think it's really helping here because I'm just able to run my engine. Don't have to worry about laying eggs at all. Uh, apart from the occasional egg lay maybe for the end of round goals. But uh, yeah, for the most part, that's sorting me out. It's given me enough eggs to play birds um, and maybe even have a few left over for some points at the end of the game. But yeah, the food uh, still coming through. So I'm just picking up fish. I'm just, you know, always in the back of my mind. I'm thinking, what if Atlantic Puffin comes up? What if uh, Woodstalk comes up? Uh, Got to be prepared. And, you know, I'm going to I'm gonna be forcing stuff with fish anyway, probably. So um, I'd rather just take uh, diversity of food. And so um, that's what we're thinking here a little bit as well. We'll take the berry. We need that for... Um, the Gallinule at 99 on the American Crow is just less than 100. So uh, by the skin of our teeth, we get another hunt off the Horned Owl. But three for three so far. It's doing its job. And the points total is not looking too bad. A little sneak peek there, 55. I think it's pretty good coming into the end of the third round. And um, yeah, now we've got all of our rodents. Definitely thinking it's Golden Eagle time. Uh, we're not going to be able to do anything for the center round, sadly, of course. The buster for them, really good, um, helping them win this end of round goal comfortably. But um, I still want to get this down. It's still a no-brainer play. Um, eight bird points minus one egg, but then two from the falconer. Um, yeah, net nine points. You uh, you don't get many birds better than that in this sort of situation. So straight away, yeah, we're just going to go ahead and get that down. And then it's all going to be about what we can get in. Uh, in the round four trade. Definitely hoping for something big points. Like I say, puffing would be nice. Something maybe that hits our bonus cards. Um, also what we'd be looking for, but uh, we lose that end of round goal. As I said, and going into round four, we have 
Uh, East Imperial Eagle, thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and grab you for my Falconer bonus card. So lovely stuff. Probably not going to have enough cards to feed it. Uh, depends how much co-op I get from my opponent's Sandpiper. But yeah, Horned Owl, again, definitely doing its job there. Four from four, and we get another four-point turn. So very lovely stuff. Um, that Collar Dove would have been nice as well. Um, definitely in the back of my mind hoping that my opponent doesn't think about denying that and leaves it because I'm just going to have so much food. Um, these uh, these teal powers like the Call of Dove, you get to discard up to five food at the end of the round and get one tuck for each. So, you know, you're looking at a 10-point bird there because all this extra food has got to go somewhere. Um, and I would definitely, yeah, like to be playing that in addition, of course, to the Eagle. And I've still got this Galen, you're still not forgetting about that. Um, not going to make use of the brown power, but um, yeah, kind of similar to the eagle. It's a big point bird. Um, hits my bonus card, so uh, for seven points, minus an egg, plus two bonus points, it is still an eight point bird, so pretty nice stuff. My opponent draws, they block the collar dove, sadly, but we get a free card, which is a point, uh, because we are going to be playing the eastern imperial eagle later. Um, so that is definitely nice, but um, yeah. Galanul, I think that's got to go down here. Um, as I said, big point bird. Lovely stuff. And um, just about thinking, really, what the remainder of my turns here are going to be. I've um, only got three turns left. Probably not going to need to take food again. Um, definitely going to need to lay eggs at some point. Um, so it's all about counting, and it's all about planning. And it's all about making sure um, that I'm going to do the best sequence of turns. And I think um, every single strong sequence of turns here... Um, involves the galleon. Well, that was the common denominator. So, um, yeah, we are indeed uh, going to go ahead and get that down. And I'm definitely not expecting my opponent to be drawing cards again. So, um, trying to think, okay, I play this eagle. Um, how many cards can I tuck under it? How many food am I going to need to pay? I do have a couple of rodents in the supply. So, um, that is, uh, yeah, that is going to help for sure. Uh, but my opponent at the moment... Blanking on this end of round, they are getting some birds down. So Hermit Thrush went down last round from the Moltoni. Now the Spotted Owl as well. So they're getting some big point birds down themselves. Um, they're getting another bonus card there with the Spotted Owl. So uh, pretty nice stuff for them. And yeah, I, I'm trying to work out what they're going to do. How much more free food maybe they're going to give? Are they going to legs twice? Are they going to draw uh, more food? Maybe draw some more cards um, or just keep playing birds? Uh, but this is where I've got to work out my plan. So there's two options here that I see. And the first one that I almost went without thinking was just to play the owl, play the eagle, and lay eggs. Um, but before I played the owl, I had a little bit of a think of how many points this is all going to be worth. So burrowing owl, five points, minus an egg, plus two off the bonus. as a six-point bird. I can then play the eagle, but only get one tuck. So it'd be eight points, minus two eggs, plus two uh, off the bonus card. Is eight points, so that's 14 I then legs once, four eggs, and two hunts. It's 18 points plus those two hunts. However, there is another option here, which is just to ignore the owl and play the eagle. And the advantage there is that you get both of the tucks uh, from these two birds. So um, eagle now becomes a 10-point play because seven points plus two tucks minus one egg plus two off the bonus is 10. I can then legs twice. I chuck a food each time. Uh, I get a total of 8 eggs plus 2 hunts. So again, it's 18 points plus 2 hunts. Um, but the strength of that second plan is the 2 hunts are both on the Golden Eagle as opposed to having one on the Eagle and one on the Owl. And the Golden Eagle is a much, much better hunter than this Burrowing Owl. So much more chance of getting points. Um, I actually save food this way as well uh, because I only have to spend 1 to play the Eagle. Don't have to spend the extra 2 for the Burrowing Owl. And... I'm laying eggs twice, and so I'm getting eight eggs and not having to discard as many by playing more birds. Um, so it just gives me a bit more leeway. I was kind of worrying a little bit that actually, uh, if I could only lay eggs once there, um, I might not necessarily hit the center round, um, just depending on what else my uh, opponent was going to play. So yeah, I think this is a really good case of uh, not just going with the obvious. You know, I had in my head this whole time, play Burrowing Owl for the bonus card, then play the Eagle and then lay eggs, but um, sometimes just stopping, pausing, and thinking, counting through the different scenarios, especially in this late game with only a few turns left. Um, it can make the difference. 
because sometimes in these close games, and I've got to say, this feels like a very close game, um, but those one or two points that you can kind of squeeze out late in the game, um, that could be the difference between winning and losing. So um, yeah, it can take a little bit of time sometimes. Um, I'm not usually one for those long turns late in the game, thinking and calculating through multiple different scenarios. Uh, but I think in these kind of cases where there's just maybe two or three different options and there's only a couple of turns to uh, to determine, I think it is worth it. And, uh, yeah, hopefully it's going to pay off here. Hopefully um, this Golden Eagle is going to be able to repay our faith with two hunts rather than just the one uh, from the original plan. So we're going to go ahead and lay eggs, stack up as many in these cavity nests as possible. And thank you very much, Golden Eagle. Um, so that's a five-point turn, so... Yeah, the turn's not necessarily the strongest here late in the game, of course. The forest only four, but we were able to play some of those big point birds, uh, which was really, really nice. So yeah, come back around to our last turn, fill up more cavity spaces, um, discarding some of this extra food. Um, I think just by virtue of having this Eastern Imperial Eagle, we did have a lot of extra food. And sadly, Golden Eagle misses that time. So you can calculate, you can plan all you want, uh, but there is still an element of randomness and chance in this game so comfortably win the end of round goal in the end and we go into the scores and as i said i had no real idea which way this was going to go it felt like it was going to be a super close game my opponent with moltoni playing lots of birds but we actually come out ahead there so after birds and bonuses we have a slight lead they drag it back with the end of round goals and i think they do have more eggs as well so they are with a slight lead but thanks to our forest engine plenty of caches and plenty of tucks we bring it back and we hold on for the win there in the end, 105 to 99. So I was really happy with this game. I think this is a really solid forest engine. Uh, my opponent was definitely looking good there. Uh, Visionary leader was a little bit of a dud bonus card, but they did get some points off that. Um, I think having to draw cards again late in the game. Um, so yeah, not uh, not a huge point scoring turn, but did at least get some points off their bonus card. But yeah, maybe a few slightly better bonus cards. They might have been able to, to get it even closer and maybe uh, even get the win. But yeah, good bonus cards for us. As I said, Falconer, eight points. Omnivore, four points. Really, really lovely stuff. And just a really solid forest engine. I, I don't think this is anything that flashy. Um, the Robin coming out was huge. But I'm going to say it again. I think all those free cards my opponent gave me, um, I think I counted only three times I drew cards this whole game with no card gaining brown power of my own. And I was still able to play nine birds. Um, so that really just highlights how many free cards I was given. Um, with the weak wetlands I had, I wasn't having to gamble off the deck. Wasn't having to keep drawing for zero points or even negative one points discarding those eggs. So just able to run my engine more, get more food, get more of these big point birds down. And uh, yeah, really, really solid, really solid game. Really happy with uh, how that went. And of course, there's another win. So um, definitely helps our chances in this World Cup qualification campaign. We're looking strong uh, in these regional group stage, but there are still a few more games to come. So if you want to see those uh, future games, please do stick around, do stay tuned, hit the subscribe button, 